Hey, and welcome back to our module for how to set up teams. You remember, I mentioned already, this is not a Scrum Master responsibility. But as with many other Scrum Masters that I've worked with, I guess, or I bet even, that it might be your responsibility in your organization or that your organization will ask for your input on how to set up teams. In general, I have observed three different ways to do that. The first way is to take an existing group of people. In many organizations, those are programmers or developers that are already building something together, that are used to working together, but they have dependencies to the outside world if they really want to deliver a product increment that is potentially shippable. At one of our clients, many years back, we had exactly that scenario where we had a group of people that could build something, but they didn't have the capabilities and the capacities in their group to do the quality assurance. They didn't have anyone who knew how to do the documentation for the users. So we went out and reached out to the other departments and got some resources, some other team members to be able to do that kind of work. Those teams ultimately ended up being cross-functional and also self-organized due to the coaching that they received. A second scenario, a second option that I've seen is in some other organizations that I worked with, where a group of leaders, maybe someone from product management and someone from engineering, who are the sponsors of the initiative, get together and handpick individuals from different departments to work as one cohesive group to deliver a product. We saw this a few years back with MAN, the German truck and bus company, and we documented our learnings about them in a case study, which you will find linked below this video. And lastly, I've seen an approach that early on emphasizes on self-organization. At one of our clients, we laid out what are the basic characteristics that we want to see in every team. And those were primarily, we want teams to not be too big, not more than 10 people, and we want every team to be able to deliver end to end. We moved everyone that would be part of this initiative, part of this product development into a large room, and we asked them to self-organize into teams that would meet those characteristics, being less than 10 people, and being able to deliver end to end. After a few hours, all of those people came out and they had self-organized into teams. This is, by the way, a great exercise to run with people to demonstrate the power of self-organization. In our next video, we will look at what are the key success factors based on our experience in working with hundreds of teams in various industries. See you then.